So, you want to play Archipelago, but you're confused by all the words like YAML and async, and the thought of asking another person to guide you through it leaves you feeling violently ill. Well, this video's for you. First off, this is going to assume you have some notion of what Archipelago even is. If you don't, then check out this video in the corner to view a brief explanation, but basically, you take a bunch of video games, put all their items in a blender, and then everybody takes a swig. A single game of Archipelago is often called a seed, named after the random seed that's used with each player's options to generate that particular combination of things. A seed has some number of slots, referring to a particular run of a particular game. You can think of these slots as players, although nothing's stopping someone from piloting multiple slots in the same seed. You could even play every single game in Archipelago all alone if you want. There's no realistic limit on the number of slots in a seed, and any game can be in the seed as many times as you want. So if you have 14 friends and you all want to play Zork Grand Inquisitor, then go on, live your best life. Archipelago is a website, and also a program that you can install. Some of the things can be done on the website, but it can all be done on the program if you want to, so if anything ever happens to the website, you're never left unable to play. Running things on your own computer is what's called local, while the website is referred to as remote. There are three main parts of running an Archipelago game. Generation, hosting, and playing. Generation can be done locally, or on the website, but only for supported games. Supported games are games that are vetted by the community and have some mild guarantee of continued support through future Archipelago updates, but there are tons of unsupported games that are still completely playable. We'll get to those in a minute. Hosting a game can be done locally, or on the website, even if it contains unsupported games. Playing game is something you do locally because seriously, what's the point of having the website play your game for you? That's kind of why you're here. We'll be going through all three of these parts in order, but if you're interested in just one of them, feel free to check out the time codes in the description or on screen and skip ahead to the one that's relevant to you. The Archipelago website doesn't have a direct download link. This is intentional both to save on server bandwidth and to direct people towards the GitHub, where you can be provided with a bunch of resources all at once. You can get there from the website by scrolling down to the bottom and clicking this source code link. That'll take you to the GitHub page, where you can find the latest stable release on the right side under Releases. If you haven't been directly told by someone to install a specific version by whoever's running your Archipelago seed, you'll most likely want to grab the latest release. Scroll down to the bottom of the changelog and click the version for your operating system. In this case, a Windows user would click the Windows executable. I only have access to a Windows machine for the sake of recording this tutorial, but if you're on Linux, chances are you don't need a tutorial in the first place, and if you're on Mac, then your soul is already tainted and you will never reach the kingdom of heaven. Simply run the installer from your downloads, accept the license agreement blindly without reading it, and decide whether or not you want to include the currently last remaining install time optional module for additional link to the past sprites, then click next. Be careful checking create a desktop shortcut because there's like 50 applications in this and it'll make a shortcut for all of them. This is going to install to C, Program Data, Archipelago, which you might not be able to see on Windows, depending on your settings. If you don't see the Program Data folder, go into View, Hidden Items, and then check the box. This is going to be referred to as the Archipelago directory in the future. You can also find it by searching for Archipelago Launcher in your Start menu and selecting Browse Files from the left side panel. If you intend to play solely with supported games, for an easier setup time, feel free to skip ahead. But installing an unsupported world, known as an AP world, is actually incredibly simple and you shouldn't be intimidated by it. The only major downside is that it forces you to generate the game locally, and it doesn't have the fancy web page for setting up your options, but those will be covered in the next section anyway, so it won't be so bad. We can get through this together. The first step in installing an unsupported game is to find the AP World file itself. 
This will be a single file with the extension .apworld, which might be provided to you by whoever's running your Archipelago seed, or you can find one on the Archipelago Discord in that game's development thread. Once you have your AP World file, you can either install it by double-clicking it, letting it install through the launcher, opening the launcher and clicking Install AP World, or manually by going into your Archipelago directory and placing the file under the Custom Worlds folder. Once it's installed, restart the launcher and you'll be able to generate games with it. Open its client, if it has one, and generate template options for it. In order to join an Archipelago seed, it first must exist. This is where generation comes in. The very first thing you'll need to do is decide who is playing and what games they'll be playing. Gather up any number of friends, note obtaining friends is outside the scope of this tutorial, and then have everyone pick the games they want. Once everybody knows what game or games they're playing, you'll need to generate an options file for each. These files have the extension .yaml and thus are sometimes called settings yamls or just yamls. If the game you want to play is supported, you can go to the web page, go to supported games, find your game, and click options. These are different for each game, but most games have reasonable defaults, so if you don't know what an option does, leaving it unchanged is usually your best bet. From there, just hit export options to download the YAML file. If the game is unsupported, or you want more control over the settings than the website gives you, you can edit the YAML file manually. This allows for some pretty fancy mechanics like randomizing the options themselves. For the sake of this being an intro video, advanced YAML settings are not going to be discussed here, but a link will be provided in the description with more information if you're interested. Oh, and you know, you'll be passing right by the subscribe button while you're going down there, just saying. In the Archipelago Launcher, click on Generate Template YAMLs and you'll be brought to a folder that contains default options file for every game you currently have installed, even unsupported ones. Open the file you want in a text editor and you'll see the same options the website gives you access to, complete with comments explaining all of them. Make sure to change your name at the top to whatever you want. When it comes to defining a choice for the option, these are in the format of option, colon, weighted chance. So in the case of numerical options, the number on the left is the one you want to actually pick, and on the right is the weighted chance. For example, here, if you wanted to change the advancements goal value from 40 to 20, you change it from 40 colon 50 to 20 colon 50. Note that Unless you actually have values after the colon for multiple options, every number that isn't zero is basically the same thing. Imagine this number is how many bingo balls with that option value written on it and you put them in that big mesh rolly thingy and then draw one out at random. Once each player has an options YAML, you'll want to give all the files to the seed roller so they have them all in one place. If you're watching this section, that's probably you. If every game involved is supported, you can generate on the website by clicking Start Playing, Generate Randomized Game, enter the options that you'd like, hit Upload, select all of the YAMLs, and upload them. If everyone set up their YAMLs properly, you should be taken to a screen showing successful generation. We'll pick up there in the next section, Hosting. For now though, let's talk about local generation. The generation settings from the website screen can be found in another YAML file, this time called host.yaml, in your Archipelago installation directory. You can also click the open host.yaml from the launcher to open it directly. Once you've got your settings tweaked to your liking, move all of your player option files into the players directory of your Archipelago installation. Then open the Archipelago launcher and hit generate. If everyone set up their options YAMLs properly, you should see a command window pop up briefly and then close itself. Check inside the output directory of your Archipelago installation and if you see a zip file, the generation was a success. 
The zip file, generated by a local generation, will contain the Archipelago server file, a spoiler log if it was enabled in the options that lists where every item is, and any slot-specific downloads such as ROM patches or mod downloads. If you generate it locally, you'll need to send these files to your players for those slots since the website will not be able to give you a download link like it would for games generated on the website. To host locally, you can either open the Archipelago Launcher, click Host, then navigate to the zip file from your generation, or the .archipelago file extracted from it. This will host the game on your machine using the port specified in your host.yaml file. If you're intending for other people to join this game, you'll need to forward that port to prevent traffic on it from being blocked, which is out of the scope of this tutorial. If you don't already know how to port forward, chances are you're going to want to use the website to host it instead. So let's spend our time working on that. Go to the Archipelago website, click on Start Playing, then host a pre-generated game. Upload either your zip file or the .archipelago file from within it. It is here that we rejoin the website generators from the last section. Now, you'll be seeing a screen showing your seed status, a download link to the spoiler log if there is one, and a button to create a new room. This will host your seed and allow people to connect to it. Note, you can create multiple rooms from the same seed, which could be used for competitive races to have multiple groups of players playing the exact same random seed. The next page is your seed's room. This is where you'll find your connection information, which will contain the port number needed to connect, and some other useful amenities like a console and a tracker link. Keep this URL around. Anyone can access this page, but only you can use the server console, so feel free to send the URL to all of your players. If the room goes long enough without anyone sending an item, it'll go to sleep, and someone will need to open that URL to wake it back up. If this happens, there's a chance your old port's now in use and it'll have changed, so double check the port number. If you generated a game on the website, you might see some download links for some games. This will give you a ROM patch or a mod file or whatever might be necessary to play that game. Okay, this is probably what you're here for, and I've cleverly hidden it at the end of the video in order to increase viewer retention rate, and you've fallen for it. Unless, of course, you just clicked ahead, in which case, well played. Good news, this is the last step before you get to run around and collect your Pokemans or shoot your Metroids or whatever. Bad news, it's also the one that's got the most different ways to do it. Every game has different steps for installing their mods or connecting, but we're gonna go through first how to find out how to do this part and go over some of the more common cases. If the game is on the website, then there's going to be a guide walking you through getting set up. Go into supported games, find your game in the list, and then click on the setup guides. This will take you to a page where you can find guides for your game, possibly even in multiple languages, but if English isn't your first language, I don't think you'll have made it this far because I talk really fast and that's not really help. This guide will often include links to any required mods or mod loaders, as well as installation instructions. We do a good job here of making sure these are readable, so it should be fairly simple to follow along. If you could follow this mess of a video, then these documents should be no trouble at all. Still, if you want to see the setup process, there are a few similarities between games. The following section is just going to have a big ol' in general asterisk over the whole thing. Please consult your individual game's guide before trying to connect. If your game is a ROM, the usual process is to take the patch file that's generated with the seed, either downloaded from the room or provided by your seed roller, and double clicking on it. It should then launch Archipelago, ask you for the location of the original unmodified ROM if you haven't ever run this type of patch before, and then generate the patched ROM and load up the game's client. If you've got an emulator installed that's associated with that game's file type, it might even open up your emulator as well. If it's a really fancy patch, it might even open up the Lua console and execute the connector script, but if it doesn't, we'll get to that in a minute. This window here is the generic Archipelago client. Most games that have an external client will look pretty much like this. URL at the top, command line at the bottom, whole bunch of info in the middle. 
You can either enter the URL at the top and hit connect, or copy the slash connect command from the room page into the command line and submit. For more modern games with proper modding support, the client is usually built into the game through the installation of a mod. This combines the Archipelago client into that game's mod itself, and you'd usually connect and interface with it through in-game chat client or through developer console. Connecting through one of these is unique per game. You'll have to check your game setup guide to see specifically how. There might be a UI window, or somewhere in the options, or a command string that you type in somewhere. Just check the guide, they'll tell you what to do. That should be everything you need to know to get started. If you're planning on playing Archipelago, I highly recommend joining the Discord server linked in the description. You can find updates on new games, join groups to find players, and get game-specific technical help if the setup guides aren't enough. If you want to see what it looks like to play Archipelago, check out my current run of every supported Archipelago game over here. But otherwise, I will see you in the Discord. But before I go, I will leave you all with this life advice. Play vanilla, then play solo, then play multi-world. Don't make me tap the sign. Good night, everybody!